Hey guys, Dan here. Tonight we're going to take a look at the high grade uh, Silver Bullet Gundam. It's an MSV line kit, but it actually made an appearance in the last episode of Unicorn Gundam. Uh, before I get too involved with the review, the first thing I want to show you is just how large this model kit is. Although it is a 144 scale kit, it stands as high as a master grade wing kit or even uh, one of the crossbones. So just for a scale of reference, here's the 144 GP01 uh, standing right next to it. And as you can see, it's two heads shorter even to the head height, and then the backpack is a significant uh, gain over that. So, it, you know, it, it really stands out among your other high-grade model kits on your shelf, and it's uh, definitely a, a real looker. Um, some things I want to mention about this model kit is Bandai gives you the parts to build this kit two ways. You can either build it with the, uh, the Gundam head, which is the head model that I have on it, or you can uh, build it with the Gim head. And it has this... Um, a similar looking face with a goatee, but the big difference is the inclusion of that clear blue visor. Um, additionally with that, uh, the method that this little uh, quasi Saikamu uh, arm floats around uh, with the, the Gim head will change. The Gim head actually has a wire guided version, and the Gundam head has um, a wireless version and includes uh, the little auxiliary uh, claw hand that you can see holding the beam saber in the kit now. And uh, the nice thing about these little claw hands uh, is that the fingers on them, two of them at least, are articulated. So as you can see on the model kit, it is capable of holding a beam saber. Unfortunately, the articulation on the auxiliary hand is really limited and it can't actually bend at the elbow even though it looks like it, it could be able. Uh, this kit comes with uh, a pretty good smattering of weapons. Um, if you look at the feet of, of the kit now, you have um, these two large things are anti-ship missiles. You have a beam rifle, which is honestly it's a little small, kind of looks like an afterthought. Um, you have these little bits that fit into the backpack, and you can actually attach the, uh, the bit to the kit using this little wire, so it looks like it's floating around. And you have this uh, collapsible shield weapon here that um, you can open up and, you know, collapse into itself. And it also has these nice little missiles molded in detail. Uh, the bit on the back, like I mentioned, does fit into the backpack. And on the backpack you have uh, these two maneuvering veins and a little compartment here full of missiles are colored. You can also, with the backpack, bring it up like this so it can shoot over its shoulder, which is kind of cool. Also on the back you have these huge thruster bells, which should be good for modifying. Uh, same thing, actually, there are little thruster bells on the legs, too. Um, Speaking of modification, this kit is probably a good choice if you want to practice modifying kits. Um, it has a lot of uh, flat panels on the, the chest and uh, on the shoulders that would be really good for panel line scribing. Um, you have a lot of seams like on the, the arms here running down the head and um, along the top of the shoulder that are good for seam line fusing. Um, and the kit's also going to require some masking. Um, it, it does have a heavy reliance on, um, on decals. As you can see here, the, the decal sheet for this is uh, pretty significant. Um, there are no parts on this kit that are molded in white, so everything that should be white is molded in gray. So you're going to have to go through and give it a good uh, few layers of paint. Um, probably the most... Um, troubling area that will that you'll have painting um, are these little uh, raised areas down here on the legs. Uh, my kit, for example, uh, this detail was really shallow, and I had to go through and rescribe it with a panel line scriber. Um, if you try masking it otherwise, it's probably not going to look too good. So just bear that in mind. Um, due to this kit's large size and kind of like heavily armed and armored appearance. The uh, articulation isn't great. Your arms can only bend about 90 degrees uh, up, and same thing with the legs back. But you do have um, 
some nice articulation in the feet. Uh, there are two points actually you can rotate back and forth and then at the ankle it's a ball joint. Um, I will also mention that the uh, the hip joint uh, on this kit is a little bit weak and I think that's due to the large heavy legs. So just bear that in mind that your the legs of the kit may get weak over time and you may have to go in and um, uh, beef them up somehow probably if you just end up painting the kit it, you'll find that it'll hold its position a lot better. Um, overall my opinion of the kit's pretty good. Um, despite its large size it's actually fairly inexpensive. This kit will run you about $25. So it actually makes it cheaper than the high grade Sananju which you know you could argue is a better looking kit but it's also smaller. Um, it's a good kit for doing modifications. It's a good work uh, kit for uh, uh, just challenging yourself to practice uh, you know, seam lines and masking and a, a few other things. Um, it may not be the best kit for beginners, especially because it's reliance on seals, which typically don't look too good. But overall, it's a kit I would recommend, um, especially because it's an MSV, and honestly, it's nice that Bandai releases MSVs that aren't uh, P Bandai kits. Uh, there is actually a P Bandai version of this kit. As far as I can tell, the only uh, difference between this model and that is simply the inclusion of a fin funnel and a different color palette. So this is definitely the one to get to save yourself some money. Anyways, guys, this is Dan signing out. Hope this review was helpful. See ya.